can't believe I'm back with 10 more games that drove me mad. Some of them on several occasions, while some others, just one, one occasion was enough to make me lose my mind. That's right. Some of these games, I beat them. I managed to beat them. And you know what? I love them. They're great games, some of them, while some others just not great games at all. And some others, I didn't beat them. We'll find out why today. So welcome, I guess, once again, for the third fucking time, to my Rage Quit video. Have you ever Rage Quit in a game? Have you ever Rage Quit on a JRPG? Well, guess what? Me too. Me too. Let's begin. Let's begin with number 10. Number 10 is a game for the Sega Genesis. I played this game on this compilation. That's right. It's called Shining Force. That game is awesome, it's one of the most historically important strategy RPGs of all time. I love the first one, I prefer to date the first one over the second one, but the second one? It's good enough, I love the game. But it pissed the shit out of me! You wanna know why? You wanna know where? What happened? It was only once. Sure, there are some annoying things like random encounters that you just can't run away from unless you reset the fucking game. Yeah, okay, games have annoying stuff, that's okay. But what pisses the shit out of me is the, the battle you're watching right now. Fucking chess battle. That's right. It's a hard battle, it is. It requires a lot of strategy to beat it. And that's what I did in the end. After like Four attempts, that is. So what happened here? You know, what pisses me off is that there's a lot, usually in Shining Force games, enemies are just there around the entire map, divided everywhere, just spread out. But in this battle, as you can see, it's a chess battle. All of the, all of the enemies are just, you know, hanging there, just there together waiting to gang up on you. Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, I realized that all I had to do was loot out the king and gang up on him. Sounds easy, right? Well, it, it was sort of easy, but as soon as I entered his range, some of the other pieces of the chessboard will be looted out as well, including those goddamn bishops who kept healing him all the other pieces or beating the crap out of my characters. And you know what's worse? The fucking king has the speed up to heaven. I mean, he has like three turns for every entire set of turns your characters have. Man, what tough battle. But in the end, I managed to beat. That's right. I devised a strategy. I lured the king. And I made every single one of my characters to attack that, that motherfucker. I beat the crap out of him. So yeah, I haven't beaten this game because, I mean, like five or six missions after that one, Jason sent me the PS4 and yeah, you know what happened. I might go back to it one day because it's a pretty good game, regardless of that battle. Number nine. Oh boy, I thought of including this game in my last video, that was like a year and a half ago, and I didn't include it, because other games in there pissed me more than this one. But this one has just one boss battle, sure it's a tough game, I didn't rage quit in other parts, I just got a little angry. But there was one boss battle near the beginning of the game that pissed the crap out of me. 
Lost fucking Odyssey. This asshole is, in my opinion, the absolute best Xbox 360 JRPG. This game, made by Miss Walker. Yeah, you know, Hironobu Sakaguchi and new company after leaving Square shit. That's right, great game. But, you know, to anybody who has played this game, they already know which battle I'm talking about. That's right. It's technically the first boss battle in the game because the first one is the first battle in the game, which is kind the protagonist, that doesn't count. Well, let's call it the second battle of the game, the second boss battle. It's this fucking alien thing with its fucking minions just respawning every time you kill them and casting magic and beating the crap out of your allies. I don't understand. You know, sometimes I feel like the developers are want to troll the gamers. I mean, why would they make such an unbalanced battle, such a difficulty spike in JRPGs? I mean, Lost Odyssey is no fucking exception. This boss battle is insanely frustrating. And I can't believe it. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just very unfair, tedious. You remember that boss battle against the fucking bird, Hollow Lolo Bird in Bats and Kaito's Origins? That pissed the crap, the gigantic crap out of me. Well, this one's similar. Yes, I mean, I can't believe this battle. I can't believe it's the first, or rather the second boss battle in the game. You know, when I first played that game, I reached quit in that battle. I reached quit and I say, fuck this game. Fuck it, it's just too hard. Maybe I'll train, I'll, I'll level up, blah blah blah. But some other day, because I was so pissed off that I quit in the game and didn't go back to it until several years later. That's right, years later. And I remember that battle. I restarted the game from the fucking beginning and all I did was level up and, you know, it was too frustrating and tedious. But at least I managed to beat it. And I'm so glad because this game is wonderful. And I mean it. I mean, it's a great, great JRPG. The best, in my opinion, for the Xbox 360. So, <clears throat> I'm glad that battle pissed the crap out of me. And I, because it made me went back to it and properly beat it. Which quitting sometimes isn't that bad. Number eight, however, involves the final boss. Unfortunately, I can't show any gameplay about that. I mean, I can, but I won't because I want to avoid spoilers. I mean, a lot of people have already played this game and beat it, but some others ha haven't, and maybe they're planning on beating it. So I, I can't show any gameplay. I mean, I think it will be unfair. Anyway, Tales of Sestiria. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, it's the, the worst Tales of ever. It's a terrible game. No, it's not. Well, it's my, in my opinion, it's a good game, it's a decent game. Is it one of the worst Tales of? Yes, it is, but that doesn't make it a bad game. Whatever. The final boss in this game... My, man, you have no idea. I can't explain much, because, you know, spoilers. So, to avoid spoilers, let's just say you gotta do something that doesn't involve strategy, doesn't involve what level you are on, doesn't involve anything like that. It involves skill. That's right. First of all, it's a very extremely tough boss battle. Yes, you can level up, but it won't exactly help. I found that on a walkthrough that you need to use a certain character and spam this certain kind of attack to, let's say, fill up a bar. You don't have to fill up a bar, but to avoid spoilers, I have to explain it that way. Let's just say you have to fill up a bar or meet certain conditions by spamming this attack by this certain character until you can do this sort of... You can you have to click the button at the right time to beat the crap out of the boss. That's right. They did this penalty on this game. Why? I have no idea. You know, maybe Namco Tail Studio said, Hey, you know, this is a game that people are going to hate anyway, so... Why don't we give them more material, more reasons to hate the fuck out of it? That's right. You know, let's just meet what kind of condition could we put in this game to piss the crap out of gamers? Level up? No. 
extremely hard battle? Yes, but no. Let's make them do this special thing, special requirement you absolutely need to beat the final boss, otherwise you can just be fighting against the boss forever, nothing will happen, he, he will just keep on going over and over and over and over and over and over until you execute this special fucking requirement. I fuck that! Namco Tail Studio, fuck you for doing that. Sorry if I didn't properly explain, explain what the hell happened, but spoilers. Number seven! Number seven is the game you've all been waiting for. This fucking game. God. I love this game. I loved it. Nero Automat. This is a great game. You know, the hype. All the hype gamers did, all the promotion, the advertisement. Also, you can go and play the game out of curiosity and say, they were right, it's awesome! But, there's a huge problem with this game. I don't know if Yoko Taro is a fucking troll or whatever, but he likes to piss off people with certain battles. The fucking battle against that stupid ass character! Oh man! It also had not exactly a special requirement, no, but you needed to be very skillful in dodging his gigantic spam of bullet hell attacks just so you could have a slight chance of beating the crap out of him in any difficulty. Doesn't matter if you're playing on easy, normal, or hard, or whatever. You know, it pisses you off, it frustrates you, and makes you rage quit so fucking hard that you start questioning the game, yet you start saying is this really a good game? What the fuck were the developers thinking? Well, <clears throat> it's a really unfair boss battle but somehow I managed I managed to beat that battle it all required a little bit of skill that's right isn't that ironic how some games make you rage quit over and over again and then you go back to them and realize that all you needed to do was cool off, enter in a sand state, a yoga state, concentrate, and it suddenly becomes a really easy battle? That's right. That's not what happened with this game. It was still hard as fuck to achieve that. Anyway, it's a great game. It really is good. I'm not gonna talk about the real, the true final battle involving the credits. I'm not gonna spoil anyone. That was some really big horseshit. Neo Automata. Rule of game. Number six. Wow. Where do I even begin? Number 6 is one of the absolute worst JRPGs I've played in my life. And I played it for like one hour. That's right, it took me one hour to realize I was playing a big piece of fuck. The name's Tracia for the Sega Genesis. That fucking game, a long time ago I was researching for hidden gems on the Genesis. And I decided to download these games so I killed any later. I'm not gonna say it's one of the biggest mistakes I've ever done in my gaming life because I needed to do this, I mean I needed to play almost every single Genesis game Hidden Gem or Hidden Games to be able to put up, to come up with that top 10 that I uploaded a long time ago So Tracia was one of the candidates, you know, I started playing the game, it looked cool, it looked interesting and all of a sudden I'm in this top view town I don't know what to do, where the fuck am I supposed to go and then I realized that you, you just need to talk to every single NPC out there and don't go find this old man at some house. I don't even remember exactly because that was so tedious that I just can't get it out of my head. I mean, you're probably thinking, you do that in almost every single RPG, but I don't know why in this particular game it was fucking atrocious. And then you go out to Overworld and guess what? You get into your first battle and it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. I mean, the controls feel so clunky, the game is so slow, it's as if sometimes you're playing in slow motion or whatever. 
I don't know what's this what's this game's problem, but it's so bad, so damn bad, beyond mediocre. I just can't believe it. I mean, you're probably gonna say it took you one hour. Come on, and one hour is not enough to deem a, a game as bad. Well, it is in this fucking case. I mean, you play this game. Go ahead and play it. It's so damn bad. And I have played bad games before, and I was like. Ah, this is a bad game, and I'm not gonna even bother with it. Two or three hours in, and I'm like, you know, forget it. It's a bad game. I don't like it. I'm sorry. But Tracia, you no know, bad games. I'm like, fuck this game. But Tracia, I was like, fuck this game. And number five, Time and Eternity is even worse. Yeah, I know I have complained about this piece of shit several times in this channel, but I just can't get enough. I just can't. It's like I have a responsibility to prove to you how bad this game is. I mean, Tracia had an excuse. It was 1991 or 2, I believe. Games weren't that good back then. A lot of GR It took a lot of effort, a lot of talent to make a JRPG look and play good. So it kind of had a little excuse for being bad. But this is the PS3 we're talking about. How can you fuck up a PS3 game so bad? I mean, where do I even begin? The story's almost crap. I mean, it's crap. It's a comedy. I like, I, I sometimes I like comedies like Fairy Fencer by Compile Heart with a lot of fan service. And you know what? I like that game. I enjoyed it. And I laughed my ass off at some point. But this game, it's like it was made for retarded people. Like, who and who the hell is gonna laugh at this fucking game? The story is ridiculous. With ridiculous in a very, very bad sense. And the battle system? Jesus Christ. Why? I don't know who the fuck came up with that idea that you have, that, that, that you move the camera, or the, the camera moves to you every single time you shot from your gun. I mean, you fire your fucking shotgun, and every time you do that, the camera moves back and forth. That killed the game. That just fucking killed the game. I mean, you go and play this piece of shit and find out for yourself how bad that is. Like, really. Because everything else in this game is mediocre. It's just bad, you know, it's mediocre. You're like, I don't give a shit about that game. But the fact that I hated it so much is precisely... I mean, the bad story was just the tip of the iceberg. And that feature on the battle system, I mean the battle system is bad as it is, in my opinion, but making the camera move back and forth while you fire, you know, it gives you a headache. Your eyes hurt! Your eyes fucking bleed just for watching that! Who the fuck came up with that idea? Who the fuck thought, hey, that's a really good idea, fucking blind motherfucker? What? What was the point of that? Fuck that game, man. You no, know, Tracia is bad, I hate Tracia, I fucking do. But Time and Eternity had no excuse, man. This was the PS3. How could they fuck up a PS3 game so bad? Like, seriously. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Enough of the hatred. Let's move on to, to good games. Let's move on to the absolute best Star Ocean ever made. That's right, it's my number four. Star Ocean, the second story on the PlayStation 1. That game... I love it! A lot of you love it! Yeah! It is considered as one of the absolute best JRPGs for the PlayStation 1. That's great, isn't it? But you know what? You know what? You know what else? In what else this game is great in? PISSING YOU OFF! This is a really hard game, and not only that, it's frustrating. It's fucking frustrating, and I'm not talking about just one boss battle or two, no. You know, there's like half of the entire game is frustrating. However, most of the time, yeah, most, not all of it, most of the time, you just enjoy it. I mean, you suffer, you get pissed off, and 10 seconds later, you're already there trying again, or you go and grind your ass off, and then you go back to that battle, that boss battle, and whatever. There are some really annoying dungeons as well there, but I'll forgive that. The battles that pissed me off in this game were the fucking guardians. You know, there's a point in the game near the end which you have to defeat four guardians. The guardian of love, the guardian of power, the guardian of courage, the guardian of intelligence. Some of them are fun battles, some others are just not. 
okay? You understand the triace? They're not fun to play. But Jesus, they pissed the crap out of me, man. But that was a long, long time ago. And I beat them. I beat them and I felt so proud of myself because I have beaten these really tough battles. And I am not going to talk about the final boss because it's a fucking nightmare no matter in what difficulty you play him. But I'm not going to talk about the final boss because that includes huge spoilers. But be prepared, if you want to play that game, that final boss is atrociously hardcore. Number three. Number three is yet another Star Ocean. You know, what's wrong with Star Ocean? It's like Triage decided to develop some of the hardest, the, one of the hardest JRPG franchises ever. But in this particular game, they fucked up really bad. I mean, this is a good game, don't take me wrong. I liked the game, I enjoyed it, I beat it. I was okay with it. But there's three things that I have to mention that made me rage quit. Well, the final thing, the third thing, thing is laughable. So you, so you can see how mediocre Triace was when developing this game. Star Ocean 5, that's right, needs no introduction. It's allegedly the worst uh, Star Ocean game in the entire franchise, and a lot of people said it's one of the worst JRPGs of the PS4. I disagree with that, it's a pretty good game still. Nowhere near as good as any other Star Ocean out there, but good nonetheless. Anyway, the problem with this game, problem number one. Its first problem is that the camera is a fucking mess. My biggest problem is that the camera while you're fighting, it just moves around like a fucking maniac. Like a fucking mosquito, worse, like a fly. You know, it just bosses all around the entire battlefield and you don't even know what's going on. And sometimes that makes you lose. I mean, even if you're playing on easy, well, there's no easy mode in Star Ocean games, I believe. In any of them, they're just normal and hard. They're called Earth and Universe, I believe. And I was playing on normal, and even at that, even playing on normal, it was fucking annoying. Then, in some battles, the difficulty just goes up like crazy. And I mean it. I don't know why. I mean, did they even test this game? Did they even sit down to play this game and realize that some battles, not boss battles, no, random battles could entirely obliterate your party in fucking seconds, no matter the level you were in. You go into this dungeon, you fight one battle, you beat the crap out of your enemies, and in the next random encounter, you fucking die miserably. Like, why? And I'm asking you, Triace, seriously, did you even test this game? What the hell? That's the second most annoying problem with this game. And the third and final problem, oh my god. In the final boss, there's a glitch. That's right. There's a fucking glitch, can you believe that? You're in the final battle, and there's a glitch. And it's normal. I mean, it's not your PS4, no. You didn't do anything wrong. They fucked up. And unless you do something that I read on the internet, which, I, which is exactly what I did to finish this game, you're fucked. You gotta restart the battle. That's how messed up this game is, man. Number two. Ah! I'm a fucking masochist, you know that? I just realized that Somehow I enjoyed hurting myself and suffering through these games because I love them. Grow Lancer is my one of my favorite JRPG franchises ever. And boy, every single one of them is tough as fuck. Maybe the fifth one is the easiest of them all, but number uh, Grow Lancer 2, 3 and 4. Fuck. I haven't played the first one because it's in Japanese. The sixth one is in Japanese, you know, only in Japan. Anyway, Grow Lancer Generations includes Grow Lancer 2 and Grow Lancer 3. Yeah, Grow Lancer 3 is a really tough game, by the way. And Rage Quit in this game? I did, but not as fucking hot as this one. Man! Just remembering these missions, you know, it's, it's not just one mission. There are several missions in Grow Lancer 2, Sense of Justice, where there's no fucking justice in the gameplay mechanics. 
that piece the crap out. Yes, a really hard game, I get that, and there were some really hard but fun missions. Some others were just not fun, man. I'm gonna give you two examples. First, there's one mission, it's a two-part mission. I mean, you can save in between those missions, but you don't want to do that because or else you're fucked. If you save between those missions, you can do nothing but restart a second mission. Your characters arrive and they gotta do a diversion. So the main protagonist can just sneak by and enter the base and burn their supplies. That's what the second mission is all about. So <clears throat> the first mission, yes, it's tough as fuck, of course, but you devise your strategy and it's, it's kind of long, it's not a short battle. I mean, it takes you a while to get Wayne, the protagonist, to infiltrate their base. And after that, you're like, ooh, I made it. And right after that, you enter this other battle. And it's really hard because you're just weighing against a lot of enemies. And you gotta play metal fucking gear so you can just burn their supplies and get the hell out of here. We wanna know how hard that is. It's extremely hard. You know, the first time I played this game, I beat it. I, be I beat that battle. I beat every single battle. I beat the damn game and I love it. Yeah, I love this game. The second time, I don't know what the hell I did different, but I, be, I did it as well. But the third time, I couldn't get past that battle. I was like, I beat this game twice, and that's enough. Never gonna play this motherfucking again, because those battles are just so fucking frustrating. There's even another battle in which you, the, the floor around you starts falling off, and the conditions for winning is to have, to avoid your power party members to just Fall, right? And you gotta take one or two characters all the way to this fucking maze to beat the boss. While the other characters cannot move at all. They're just casting magic and helping you. You know what? That one in particular is actually a fun battle. I mean, it makes you really use your head, but it stresses the heck out of you so bad. If you want to get into this series, like, good luck to you. They're really, really hard games. Especially 2 and 4. Those are the shit, man. But no game is harder than the next one. This is the hardest JRPG I've ever played in my life with a North American release. I don't even know where to begin with this game. It's called Rondo of Swords, Nintendo DS. This asshole! I mean, every single battle here is hard. You never get a break, and you can't level up, unless in those battles, in those missions. There's no free missions whatsoever, and leveling up in this game is really hard. Really hard, because your weak characters keep getting killed over and over again, and you need those weak characters. You know why you need them? It's a strategy RPG, for Christ's sake. Fuck this game, man. I mean, yes, I like it, I enjoyed it. It's a hidden gem. In my opinion, it's one of the best Nintendo DS RPGs. I uh, worked leaving out ports and remakes, of course. I like this game, but I, I have never beaten it. I, no matter how hard I try, I can't beat this game. Do I need to explain what's going on, how the battle system works? I don't think so because I have talked about this game like 10 million times in my channel either to praise it or to complain about it. This game is the epitome of chaos, the epitome of frustration. I mean, if you go into the dictionary right now on Wikipedia, the picture of this fucking game should be next to the word frustration. I can't believe how hard this game is. The mechanics, you... it's even if you use your head, even if you're a freaking genius, you're gonna have trouble with this game. I can't believe it. Is it good? Yes. It's really good. Try it out for yourself. If you're a damn masochist like me. Like every single battle in this game, it's tough as fuck. And I got all the way to chapter 6 or 7 or 8. I don't remember because it was a long time ago. 
and I just quit. You know, the game defeated me. I was like, ooh, you know, I'm gonna stay away from this game. Yeah, I'm going to collect it and put it there on my shelf just to remind me that I just couldn't beat it. Will I go back to it one day? I don't know. I don't know. And if you're still curious about the battle mechanics, well, you see for yourself right now in the gameplay, just move your characters and in this um, very unique mechanic actually you go through both enemies and allies as well sometimes these enemies block you and they frustrate your entire attack and therefore they frustrate your entire strategy I, I can't talk about this game for two minutes without fucking remembering the times it put me through like, oh! this game is unbelievable I can't believe it exists I just can't I mean, give me a break give me an easy battle give me something lighter to go on or, or, or some way to level up my characters because if you don't level up your characters here you're fucked you're completely fucked and that concludes my video that concludes my video that's it guys that's it Will I go back to it? Will I go back to Rondo fucking swords? But you bet your ass I will. <laughs>